Bienvenidos a todos. Mi nombre es Andrea Silva. Welcome everyone. I'm Andrea Silva and today I'm going to be moderating the webinar. As you may see, we are uh, streaming from our new platform and in the near future I will expand this information so that you can make the most of it. Let me Thank you for participating in this space. And I also want to thank our panelists, Guillermo Pereira, LACNIC Security Analyst, and Graciela Martinez, uh, LACNIC CERT Leader. Today, they are going to talk about LACNIC Honeynet, discover how the network security attacks work. Before I give you the floor, let me give you the uh, dynamics we have started at 18 UTC and it will last uh, about 60 minutes. Now, let me tell you something very important. As you may see, you may see on the screen to your right, you see three tabs, chat, persons and Q&A. The chat uh, tab is going to be used by LACNIC to give you information as we go along in the webinar and you may make your comments in, under the persons uh, tab you may see all the participants connected and interact with them you may click on uh, the person's name and you can send a message or arrange a, a call and finally we ask you to use the q and a tab only for questions related to the current webinar since those in the chat are not going to be read we're going to save some minutes at the end of a presentation to answer all the questions. On the other hand, under this platform, you may have seen that you can select uh, the interpretation channel that you wish. It's going to be available in Spanish, English and Portuguese, and you have to select sessions and um, choose uh, the session you want. Um, this webinar is going to be recorded and in the near future you will receive a link um, on uh, the web mail that uh, address that you uh, registered with and you'll be able to access the recording. And finally, for any comments or questions, please write to training at lacnic.net and uh, uh, see the webinar si uh, page um, in uh, the LACNIC website now. This is all I had to tell you. Now I'm going to recognize Graciela and Guillermo. Go ahead, please. Good afternoon. Thank you, Andrea, for your introduction. While Guillermo shares the screen, I welcome you all. Thank you for being with us today with this webinar. We want to uh, give you an idea of the uh, CSERT uh, um, HoneyNet is. Guillermo is going to give you all the details and I'm going to give you a brief introduction and a description of what LACNIC CSERT is. That is the Center of Security 
incident response of LACNIC. We um, work for our constituents are the LACNIC members. The role on uh, security incidents, our role is to coordinate. We scale up the reports that we received, we send them to the organizations, and we put the organizations in contact. We do we, we act as brokers with the organizations when they have their resources affected or when they affect each other. We have no authority on the operations of the organization so that if we receive a security report, we can recommend some actions or some mitigation actions. And right away, we are going to put you in contact with uh, the people who can solve the problem for you, but it is not in our hands to mandate any organizations to do anything about uh, their infrastructure or the networks. In the c -cert side of LACNIC, we publish statistics. These statistics show the type of, of incidents that are reported by the organizations, the incidents that we have managed, um, as in our life as C cert and even before, these statistics are important for you as you administer your systems because it gives you an idea of what's going on in the region why we were why this those resources are being misused by the attackers. So with this information, this information can be used as a tool to, to prevent and uh, to adopt any preventive actions that you may require instead of just reacting after being attacked. It may also be good for you for planning, planning your uh, activities uh, with your staff and with your constituencies. We have a report point. You can report security incidents to us when they are compromising uh, the resources. These forms are available in our site. One is for common resources and the other one is exclusively for the uh, uh, um, uh, police for law enforcement, the Interpol, sometimes they are the prosecutor, sometimes they need to have some information. So in that form, uh, that form may be of use for you for that. It's also important that if you are participating, if you have people in uh, the um, um, uh, if there are members uh, that work uh, in this topic, uh, we, in our information, we detail uh, the information that we can give you, which we cannot. So without further ado, I'll give you the, f I'll give the floor to Guillermo, who's a C-CERT security analyst. Thank you. Okay. Bueno, vamos a empezar a hablar ¿no? de qué es la honeypot. We are going to start talking about the honeypots. What is a honeypot? Bueno, es un honeypot, es un sistema informático que simula It's a, a computing system that uh, simulates being vulnerable with the objective of, of uh, attracting attacks and collecting information. It may be used to distract the attention of uh, the attackants um, that are valuable uh, from the real systems that are valuable for the company. And they can be used both to prevent attacks so as to be able to adopt uh, um, preventive actions, but also to investigate the incidents, the attacks. The potential applications of this, these systems, they can be used to detect and to prevent attacks, as I said, 
that is installing a system like this we can see from what ips the attacker attackers are working so if the system is there simulating to be an attacker nobody has to connect to it so if we achieve an ip that is trying to connect there we know that it is not a real ip or a nice ip as a, we can choose to block them with a firewall or to block certain patterns that are being used. Uh, we can also use it to collect malware. There are several systems that collect malware. I'm going to discuss them uh, in further detail. We can analyze the malware that uh, the attackers uh, download from the honeypot, and we can study their behavior without having to vulnerate any real uh, equipment. And we can extract uh, the uh, um, indicators uh, um, that they have been attacked, uh, IPs, uh, ports, uh, software to feed our event collectors. And it, you can also detect um, if your system has been compromised in Latin America and in the Caribbean. So you can see the compromise of the systems and you can warn the organizations and you can deviate the attacker's attention. You can install some systems. I'm going to discuss which. They, there are hundreds of machines and you can uh, simulate that you have hundreds of uh, uh, equipments to hide the real server. What kind of honeypots do we have? We divide them into three categories, low interactivity, medium interactivity and high interactivity. The low interactivity are the honeypots that simulate a service or an application, but they do not interact with the attacker. The attacker cannot com have a complete interaction with them. They may be, for instance, to let them listening in a port. You have a server with a CCH real port and one is the bait, a honeypot. So if they try to connect with that port, you know that that is not a good connection. So they, it's going to be the message. They, they, they won't be able to enter that. They're going to receive a message telling them that they cannot. And in a medium interactivity, there the attackers can enter the system, but they are limited. They cannot execute too many commands in that system. The, these are what we use, the medium interactivity, to analyze the behavior of the attackers. And the high interactivity, these are Linux or Windows real servers. They are real, but they are for lab purposes, so that the attackers may think that they have a complete action on these systems. And through a proxy honeypot, analyze what commands they execute in this system, what malware they download from where, from the IP, etc. In these in high interactivity, these are the most difficult to maintain because they are going to give complete access to the system. These are some examples of honeypots of open software. For example, we have Dionea, which is a Linux image that emulates several services. It might emulate SSH, HTTP, and the attackers are going to scan this system, they will be unable to access it, but everything will be recorded from where they got connected. For example, the passwords that they used to attempt accessing it, the ports, etc. There's a one that's a low interactivity one, which is ConPot. Some have 
de infraestructura de una fábrica, por ejemplo, control of an infrastructure of a factory, it's similar, it's like a SCADA software, software, so that the attackers think that there is a service of some kind of factory or company that is exposed, and there they can detect from which IP the con contact was attempted. Then we have Honeyed, which is a Linux daemon that can be used to emulate several services, for example, SSH and others. And with Honeyed, they can generate hundreds of systems with just one server, and just one server. For example, we have a server at a company with SSH that is exposed, but we install Honeyed in a system next to this one, and it can simulate as if there were 60,000 hosts and conceal the real host so that the attackers can waste time in this honeyed and waste their time scanning the system and they lose sight of the real one. We also have medium interactivity honeypots, for example, Hornet. Hornet simulates a systems network. It exposes SSH. The attackers will access the system through the SSH. And when they are in the system and they try to change over to another system or to scan the network, they're going to see hundreds of hosts in the network, but they will be in a virtual network that generates this honeypot. So they will be wasting their time. And this is one of the ways to conceal the real hosts. So if they're in this controlled system, they won't be able to advance. And then we have Kauri, which is the one that we selected for our project. What is Kauri? This can be high or medium interactivity system. It can expose SSH and Telnet. It is based on another honeypot. It was replaced now by Kauri. And it is a medium interactivity. The attackers can access Kauri. It generates a virtual environment. They can execute some of the basic commands. They can download malware. It is stored there. And all the actions that the attackers carry out, accessing the system, the passwords they use, from which IP they access it, and the commands that they try to implement and the URLs from which they download the malware, all this is recorded, but it, they have a basic system to execute. They don't have a full Linux. It emulates a Linux. Kauri does so. And Kauri can also be used for high interactivity as a proxy system. It can be configured as a proxy system, and if you include a Linux or a window behind Kauri, it records every step carried out by the attacker, but on the other end, you have a full system to vulnerate. These are some of the topologies as to how to install a honey a honeypot. You can install it before the honey the firewall. This is the simplest and most secure way because the attackers will access the honeypot and won't go through to the land, to our land. This is the one we can control best because stop all the attacks with the firewall and prevent all the connections in the honeypot then go through to our network. Now, this is the one, however, which does not allow us to detect internal attacks. For example, if one of our internal hosts was vulnerated, the honeypot won't detect that. And if you wish to change machines, our machine won't realize it. This is just to record external attacks. It can be placed behind the firewall, there we lose control. Uh, the firewall, the, the firewall function, but we can detect attacks. Is for example, one of our hosts was affected. 
we can detect internal attacks in our network. It can also be installed in a DMZ or in a laboratory network. In the DMZ, we can control the attacks that take place in our servers. And in the lab ones, we can have a lab network and we can be sure that this will not go through to other networks. I will now speak about our project. LACNIX CERT receives many statistics from different organizations. So we decided to have our own statistics. This in order to carry out and draw our own conclusions and also to be more aware of all the attacks that take place in Latin America. Some are originated from Latin America and the Caribbean, but also... So for this effect, we created a honeypot network of medium interactivity. We used Kauri. We install these sensors, these probes in the voluntary organizations. And all these actions that are carried out by the attackers are then centralized in one server. Then this is used to generate statistics for those who collaborate with us and also for the community. This map shows the countries that have been included in the probe network. We have 18 probes. At present, there are several countries that are already in the HANI unit. And the minimum requirements to join the network are minimum requirements. This is a requirement so that any organization can join it as well. If you have just a Raspberry version 2 or higher, this is excellent. One giga RAM is sufficient and 16 internal gigabytes, it's very light. So this would allow you to have the probe working. This is a very simple system. We have the probes distributed in different parts of Latin America. These probes communicate with a central server, which is a mother honey network. We have the GitHub, which is open code. We have a central server, which is connected to the statistics servers. The, volunt the volunteers have the, sense, the probes there. You can look at the statistics of the entire network. Now, let me share with you some of the statistics that we have detected over the past half year. For example, the most used passwords by the attackers. We are aware that they're going to use the most frequent passwords used by people, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, admin, admin. But reading several projects on honeypots, you always see top of the list N prog. And this, according to some studies, is due to a malware used in, for cryptocurrencies. They use this as the first password to access the systems. And then we have the classical ones from 1 through 9, 1 through 8, test, security, also the most frequent users, the most common combination is admin and proc default. We have many connections that try to vulnerate microtics, the, the microtic routers. And we have others such as profile one, user, test, the most common ones. Here we see the countries of origin of the attacks. Ireland, China, Panama, United States, Russia. These are the ones at the top of the list as countries of origin of the global attacks. 
These are from Latin America and the Caribbean. These are the ones that interacted with our network, trying to access the sensors. At, right at the center, we have Panama, Argentina, Brazil, Mexico. Those are the ones that stand out. And in the dashboard of our system, we can see ASN, the ASN of Latin America. We can see the most frequent I attacking IPs. We can see the commands that were executed by the attackers, the top 10 most executed commands, and we can see that, first of all, the attacker analyzes the system to see what it is made up of, how many CPU it has, what the memory is, how much free memory. We, they look at the file system, what commands it has, who is connected, the tasks that are being executed. So these are the top 10 commands. They first analyze the system to check where they accessed. These are some of the URLs that were most used by the attackers in the month of July. This is from where they download the malware. All this is recorded. These are the top 10 statistics for July, where the malware was downloaded from, and the total virus. And the majority were detected by virus total. So if you decide to install a honeypot in your network, detect these kind of URLs, this is what can be detected by an antivirus, and you can be ahead of it and install a honeypot of this kind. And this will allow you to block these URLs from which they download the malware. Most of the systems are systems that are vulnerated. The attackers inject this software. On the right, this compares virus total with URL detected by our network. And in position number seven, it was detected only by one antivirus. So it's good to be ahead of it to be ahead of the antiviruses. These are some of the ideas we have for the future. It would be good to connect this to MISP in order to be able to share this with other MISPs from the region. region. This is to share compromise indicators. Then Milaknik has a security module which allows you to access, and we are already sending data from other organizations that have botnet detection systems and spam detection systems. That module receives information, security information, and the idea is to feed this with a probe network to Milaknik in order to see how these IPs are being used to attack the systems. So, then Kauri supports IPv6, the idea is to start to integrate new types of honeypots, not only Kauri, but other types of honeypots, to feed some systems to analyze the malware and extract indicators on how committed these were. Maybe I was a bit fast, but I hope this is not too intense. I don't know whether you want to add anything. No, thank you, Guillermo. It's good. For instance, Guillermo was telling you, he, he showed the, the dashboard of the honey net. For instance, what are the commands that are used uh, more frequently in certain attacks? So in an organization, for instance, that might be useful because if they suffer an attack, they may say, well, with this, 
con esta información yo with this information I could look for some uh, patterns or I could it could also it's, it's also very useful to have a written procedure telling me what are the actions that I'm going to adopt uh, in my organization if I'm being attacked with a certain type of attack. So this helps you learn a bit more. So in that procedure, you may add some information saying, for instance, if I'm uh, facing a set, uh, an attack like this or like that, I can look for these things in the logs or certain artifacts because you know that an artifact is the trail that uh, an attacker leaves in the uh, system, the footprint. And that is one of the good things that uh, the dashboard can give us uh, good information that might that may be useful. Andrea, go ahead. Thank you, Guillermo and Graciela. She says she's muted, but uh, we can hear her. Yes, yes, we can hear you. Well, thank you, Guillermo and Graciela, for such a valuable information. Now we are going to leave some minutes for uh, the audience to think of questions. And please remember to write them down under the tab that says Q&A, since uh, we are not going to read the uh, comments or the questions in the chat. It's the third tab that you see to your right, on the screen, to your right. So you'll have a few seconds more, and there you're going to be able to write down your questions. Here we have a question by Carlos Maldonado that says, LACNIC uh, offers, uh, what does it offer to the um, Associates. Hello, thank you for your question. Well, we are we are de developing a project to expand our services to our members, uh, but we send notifications of open uh, uh, servers either in IPv6 and IPv4, we send them notifications, we send it to our members that uh, have uh, the DNSSEC uh, configuration because they can be used to attack, to attack other infrastructures. And also, when the impact of certain vulnerabilities of certain uh, risk or threats that we see, when the threats are, uh, are very important, we issue uh, alerts and we share that with our members. And uh, compromise indicators, we are going to briefly, in, in the near future, we will be sharing that with you. Very good. We have another question by Daniel Ortega that says, how can we participate in, with these sensors? To, be, to participate with the sensors, we are requesting a public IP dedicated to the sensor and a system, a basic system, a BT, that with a one giga or RAM, it's a Linux, and you can participate. Send us an email to ccert at lacnic.net, and we'll keep in touch. You give us uh, an access, I install it, we and I give you access to the stats. Excellent. We have another question. Marvin Hiron, what are the requirements of IP resources, either public or private. Do you mean requirements to participate in the HoneyNet? Uh, that's all the information I have. That was uh, the question that uh, Marvin wrote. Yes. 
Yes, they say, Marvin says yes. As I explained to the previous in the previous question, yes, the requirements are a dedicated public IP. If you want to install more sensors, you, then you need an IP for each sensor. And we are analyzing with one of the organizations to put a private IP since uh, to have a malware in the private uh, network. But in principle, it would be a public um, um, IP dedicated for that as a sensor. We have a question by Oraldo Raimundo. I have Buda Microtech. It's configured to prevent access attempts through CH and port scanning. Can we send this information in the security part in the LACNIC website? Yes, we can receive. If he wants to send information for us to add it into the regional statistics, please get in touch with us and we'll see how we can send you that information. Yes. Now, you, what we never do is to say who the sources are. That is only what you see in the region. The idea is not to accuse, and but the idea is to have an idea of what happens in the region so that we can adopt uh, uh, actions, hopefully proactive and not reactive. The next question, Carlos Maldonado. When would you start the project of a MIS? That's one of the solutions. I don't know whether solutions is the right word, but we are analyzing this. We don't have that answer yet. Mm -hmm. um, we, we will, uh, well, as soon as we have them, we're going to share it with our members. Because that, in the end, is what we mean. To, uh, we try to do to work with our associates. Paulo Angelo Rosendez asks in English. Are raw data collected on the network shared with members? If yes, how is it done? Thank you. We don't gather data from the network. These are connections that reach that sensor. But it's not that we gather data from the network. Those are IPs exposed to the internet and we collect that information. I don't know whether that's what you mean with that question. Maybe what you mean is, what do we do with the information that we gather? Yes, the idea, if that's what you mean, the idea is to extract the uh, compromise uh, indicators as the IPs, their behavior, somehow classify them and send it to the Milaknik security module. Is that what you mean? Yes. Yes, that's what he meant. Here, Paulo Coimbra asks, what is the uh, email that we have to write to to participate in this project? It's at csirt, uh, C-S-I-R-T, at milaknik.net. Um, second question by Andres Zuniga. He says, what kind of information of the business architecture is sent to the Honeynet? No, the information of the empresarial ninguna, no. No, none of the of the uh, business architecture. No, the thing is as follows. I have a sensor exposed, and that sensor receives 
traffic of potential attacks. What, what remains in the sensor and it shares it with the central server, sense server, it collects that and then it shows what's happening to the owner of that resource. And we and we put it together with all the centers so that everybody participating in the honey net is aware of what's happening with certain attacks but the owners of the sensors cannot see what's happening in somebody else's network you can only have an overall uh, view of what's happening with the sensor network each participant that owns a network sees what happens in general uh, sensors <laughs> I wanted to clarify that the, the owner of each sensor has complete control of the sensor and may extract the malware that remains deposited in his sensor there and all the logs. And they can send it to their own event collector and analyze it their own way. And they can see everything that we collect from that same sensor. So you can see your own information. Good. I have another question. Genoveva Espejo. Do sensors have any hardware and software requirements? Yes. Yes, they do. It's a very light system. And it works with just a, a one, uh, one uh, giga RAM. Uh, Linux uh, 1804 or 2004, that would suffice, as simple as possible. You may also run it in a Raspberry with a Raspberry Lite, that, with that it would be okay. Excellent. Well, we have no more questions so far. The question that I had asked earlier in English, I don't know whether you remember it, but I can read it again. It was about... Yes, for uh, example. IPS attackers, for instance. Would you like me to read the question again in English? Yes, please do. It said... I'm going to read it in English again. Are raw data collected on the network shared with members? If yes, how is it done? No, no, se, no, se comparte. no, we don't share it. We don't share it. The categorical response is no. Good. I have another question by Victor Figueroa. We participate uh, in a network of, with shadow servers. Can we use the same equipment or do you need dedicated equipment? We'd rather have them uh, dedicated because we they, they have to use our own configuration. We could study that, but in principle, I would say no, it should be our own. We have another question by Sebastian. It says, the information of the sensor can be used to gather it privately at the same time as LACNIC? Hola, Andrea, estás, estás muteada, no, no te escucho. You're muted, Andrea, I'm sorry. I have a question from Marivaldo Fernández, and this is in Portuguese. In, caso de in case of an attack, LACNIC will send to the owners of the probes possible reaction, re reactive actions. <coughs> The question is that if in the event of an attack, LACNIC would send to the owners of the probes 
possible reactive actions. The idea is that with the probes, with the sensors, to learn what an attacker does, what behavior they have, and we could exchange some considerations between the CSERS and the owner of this probe, this sensor. But the question should come from the owner of that probe so that we so that we are, have an idea of what is happening and each owner of that probe, of that sensor, can analyze it. And yes, we are at the disposal to consider potential reaction actions. It's not that they are attacking your action. The sensor, the probe, allows you to visualize how an attacker behaves when they access a system. We have another question from Guillerme Proenza. And this is in Portuguese. He's, going to, he's asking us about the email address. Namely, what is the email address to send information to become part of the HoneyNet project? You're going to include that in the chat, right? Yes. Yes, we're going to include this again in the chat. We're going to write this email address there. We have another question from Henry Vasquez. He says, our organization generates a large amount of logs from firewall, distributed firewall devices. Is it possible to send these logs to you so that you can use for analyzing for the analytics of your system and the community? No, that is something that has nothing to do with the HoneyNet and with the sensors, with the probes. This is something that is different and we're not receiving any log from any organization. I don't know whether we'd have capacity to do so. We don't have a project of that kind so far, but thank you for your question anyway. We have another question from you, Titi. It's in English. The question is in English. Sure, if I missed it, is there a dashboard that all HoneyNet members can view the results of all sensors? And what does it look like? Is it the same CSIR dashboard? Yes, we precisely, this was included in one of the slides, this was a screenshot of the dashboard that a person can see, the owner of a sensor can see, and also in general, but yes, it was included in one of the slides. So for the time being, we have no more questions. So we thank you very much, Graciela. Thank you, Guillermo, and thank you to all of you for participating and for the interest. You know that if you have any questions, you can send us an email or you can go through the CSERT site. So thank you very much. Muy bien. Good afternoon. So we hope you enjoyed this webinar. Guillermo, would you like to add anything? Yes, I wanted to thank you for joining us in this webinar. We are already receiving some emails requesting to participate. Thank you very much to all the members who joined us. Thank you for participating. And if you have any questions, like Graciela said, any questions on the HoneyNet, please write to CSERT at lacmic.net. And we're going to include the email in the chat. If you have any questions regarding the webinars, write to training at lacnic.net. We're also going to include the email in the chat. We also invite you to visit the webinar, the LACNIC webinars website and follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, where you can find more information on the activities we organize. Thank you once again for joining us and see you next time.